The Senate will now have before it for final consideration House Bill Number 380. The Secretary will read the bill. In the House of Representatives, House Bill 380 by Ways and Means Committee, an act relating to taxation, to revise provisions regarding the income tax on Madam President. Senator Vick. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that further reading of the bill be dispensed with and the journal show it has been read at length three times and placed before the Senate for final consideration. You've heard the unanimous consent request. Is there an objection? Hearing none, it is so ordered, and Senator Vick is recognized to open debate. Thank you, Madam President, good senators. House Bill 380 is a tax relief bill, and it provides tax relief in uh, one time and ongoing. And so let me walk you through how this works. So we have, currently Idaho has seven income tax brackets, with the top bracket starting at around $11,000. Um, this combines four of the brackets into two brackets, so we end up with five brackets. Um, and those brackets, as you can see on page two, have rates of 1%, 3.1%, 4.5%, 5.5%, 5.5%, 5 and 6.5%. So our top bracket, uh, if this bill were to pass, would be 6.5%. Uh, we are surrounded, um, Idaho is bordered by six states. Three of them have no, sale, have no income tax at all. Washington, Nevada, and Wyoming have no sales tax at all. Uh, Oregon and Montana have no sales tax. So we look to, um, looking to remain competitive, and while growth is obviously robust at the moment, we have to always, it's like a business, you have to stay agile to stay ahead um, and, and stay competitive. So we would have a 6.5% top income tax bracket, that would be higher than Utah's at five, and uh, Montana just lowered theirs to 6.7. So it does keep us competitive. So that's the, the one time or that's the ongoing tax relief is lowering of the income tax brackets. And everyone in the state who pays income tax will have a tax cut. The next is on page three, and that is a tax rebate. And simply put, everybody who files an income tax return or files the Form 24 which is how you get your grocery tax credit, will get at least $50. So it's $50 for every person or and every person in your household. If 9% of your income tax is higher than that would be, for a single individual would be higher than $50, then you will get 9% of your 2019 income taxes back to you and so that is how the one-time um, rebate works. Then finally we have, or not finally, but we have the corporate tax. And until um, 2000 and 2012, the corporate tax was actually lower than the individual income tax rate. But many businesses pay their, their taxes as an individual income tax. And so in 2012, uh, we actually made the corporate tax and the personal income tax rate, the top rate, the same. And so in this bill, we lo also lower the corporate tax rate to 6.5%. And then finally, the tax relief fund on page four is uh, how these these are going to be paid for. And I do want to say that both of these items, the amounts for these items, not the details, but the amounts for these items were included in the governor's state of the state address. And uh, we have uh, within a fraction of a percent stayed within the governor's targets on this. 
in spite of the fact that revenues are up dramatically since uh, this was included in the, the state of the state addressed by the gentleman on the second floor. So this provides ongoing tax relief of $162.9 million, one-time tax relief of $220 million. Um, I handed out to you a sheet that has a couple of, uh, just has two lines on it, and that is the population of Idaho and income tax revenue. This is not total revenue, this is just income tax revenue. And the sole, there's two purposes to this. Uh, one is to show you that, in fact, income tax rates have income tax collections, excuse me, have kept up with our population growth um, in spite of the fact that we have cut uh, income taxes twice. Income taxes are one of the primary impediments to business growth, and so it's, I think it's important that we keep them competitive. Uh, I think it was kind of humorous, um, but when uh, President Reagan was trying to uh, cut income taxes. When he became president, the top income, federal income tax rate was 90%, and uh, they cut that to 35%. But he said that uh, he was talking, somebody asked him what tax bracket Albert Einstein was in, and he said, I don't know, but I do know that before he tried to figure out income taxes, his hair was straight. So. <laughs> And so one of the reasons for having fewer brackets is to simplify the tax formula. On the one-time rebate, so one of the reasons that there's, there's $50 in there for everybody is because not everybody pays income tax, but pretty much everybody pays sales tax. And so the $50 per person would allow you uh, covers the, the sales tax for $833 worth of goods. So if you bought up to $833 worth of goods, you're getting the entire, uh, that entire amount back in a rebate. Uh, and there's been some talk about that uh, most of the, that most of the revenue, or most of the reduction goes to those in the top bracket. Well, I would like to point out to you that in Idaho, again, we have we currently have seven brackets. Top bracket is at 11, around $11,000, but ni over 97%, I'm gonna say that one more time, over 97% of all income tax revenue, those people are in the top bracket. So there's there's, Less than 3% of the revenue is collected from the people who end up in one of the three lower brackets. Um, then I do want to say that I do think that having fewer brackets, as a matter of fact, having a flat tax is the fairest tax. I don't think it's appropriate to penalize people for being successful. And so when I, I read some criticism that uh, this was more like a flat tax. Uh, I took that as a compliment because I think that a flat tax is a fair, fairest tax. Make a thousand, if you have a five, five percent, it's easy, but if you have a five percent tax rate, make a thousand dollars, pay fifty bucks in tax, you pay five bucks in tax, as a matter of fact, fifty bucks. If you make a hundred thousand dollars, you pay $5,000 in taxes. So you pay more, the more you make, the more you pay, but you're not penalized for being successful. So I like the idea of a flat tax, and that was part of uh, my impetus for trying to remove a couple brackets, is to get us closer to that flat tax. I would also like to say that um, we just talked about the transportation funding. Uh, that's not affected by this. Uh, the water and agriculture product projects that were uh, outlined in the Building Idaho's Future uh, program outlined by the gentleman on the second floor are not impacted. Uh, the education budget's not impacted. Uh, the capital construction, our rainy day funds, all of those things uh, are included, and so we're not 
we haven't reduced any of those to uh, pay for this legislation. I think that I believe this is a good step forward to keep us competitive with our surrounding states. And while we're having a lot of people move here at the moment, that hasn't always been the case. And we need to stay competitive so that our children, and in this case, uh, in my case, my grandchildren, have a, a state that's competitive and producing jobs at a positive rate. And with that, debate is open. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Nye. Thank you, Madam President. To debate the bill. The Senator has the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to compliment the members of this body. We deserve compliments for what we've done in the past because Idaho's economy is booming. We don't need a cut. We need to take care of deferred maintenance in my humble opinion. We have great needs. I won't go into detail, Madam President, about our needs, but the deferred maintenance in our great state includes billions of dollars. Roads, bridges, streets, and buildings that we've deferred uh, money for, education, and others. This bill does not address the tax that I think everybody wanted us to talk about or deal with this session. Madam President, uh, I've attached and handed out some uh, papers, uh, one from, I'd like to refer to them if I might, one is the uh, Center for Fiscal Policy Analysis, April of 2021, last week, and the other is if I can do them both at once, the other is an excerpt from LSO on our uh, fiscal facts. Having identified the source, the senator may, may refer to. Sorry? The senator may refer to these, having identified the source. Thank you, Madam President. Um, if you had a chance to look at these, it's quite instructive. Um, our overhaul tax burden, if you look at the, uh, the back page, uh, with the uh, circle graph on it, the next page, uh, number page 18. Uh, this is the latest report we have from Legislative Services, LSO, on the overall state and tax burden for our state. And we're talking about competition and how we're doing. If you look at the bottom paragraph, it says, according to the report, Idaho's overall tax burden relating to the pop relative to the population of major state and local taxes is over 26 percent below the national average already. And this is the sixth lowest overall in the entire United States. So for that reason alone, one might suggest we don't need a cut. We might want to fix the roof. If you look at the, cent the center's analysis and the benefits, they say the, the benefits are extremely one-sided. This is an independent organization, a nonprofit organization that provides information for us or for whoever. Um, it says 60% of the households in Idaho will receive the benefit of $15 a month or, or less. 60% of the households. That's the bar chart on the on the back page there. The other thing that surprised me, Madam President, is that this bill may well put our federal dollars at risk, as the feds may be able to draw claw back over $800 million because of this bill. So I urge that members consider a no vote on the bill. Our surplus and our situation now should be used to invest and help in other areas of our great state. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Burgoyne. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in opposition to the legislation. Uh, if you look at the second page of the handout, the bar graph that was just mentioned, you'll see that the top 1%, who can fairly be characterized as the rich in Idaho, will receive $8,883 
uh, of this um, annual tax cut. And you'll see the other numbers there. The, the lowest 20 percent gets $82. Uh, and you've got to get up to, um, uh, even at $103,000 a year, you only get $408. Uh, that kind of a distribution uh, is not acceptable to me, and I've had no constituents send me any letters asking me to give tax cuts to the rich or to give income taxes, for that matter, uh, a cut. Um, with this kind of money, we could provide genuine property tax relief or pay off our override levies and provide real needed tax reform and relief for ordinary people in this state. I will be voting no. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Rice. Madam President, one of the things that I find very interesting is that uh, we have a tendency to think about tax cuts as being static sometimes, and they're not. Uh, one of the... the uh, interesting things about economics is it tells you that if you penalize something, you'll get less of it. And one of the ways you can penalize something is with taxation. And so when you tax, depending on your rate, you, as you increase your rate, you may get an increase in revenues. But at a certain point, that turns over and you start decreasing revenues over time. And that doesn't mean that uh, necessarily that they go down, but they can grow at a, at a lesser rate. What I've observed as I've watched ours is as we've made some cuts, um, that our rate of growth in revenues has gone up. It's not gone down. That tells me that we're on the backside of that curve. This uh, particular tax cut is mostly funded with the tax relief fund. A few year, couple of years ago, we imposed an additional tax collection methodology to collect more of the sales tax on uh, internet sales from things that didn't have a location in our state, but we dedicated that to tax relief. And this bill begins fulfilling that promise to the citizens of the state of Idaho by giving them tax relief funded by those collections. Uh, that's an important thing. I think it's rather interesting because um, I see references to in in a handout to to making this will make the taxes more regressive. Frankly, I don't agree that uh, the income tax, if it's at a flat tax, is regressive. Um, I also happen to be Christian, and apparently God believe, agrees with that, be, or I agree with Him more likely, because He didn't ask for a different rate from different people. Uh, a tithe is 10%, and he asked the same from everyone. It's really difficult to give someone who pays $100 in tax a dollar amount tax cut that's as big as someone who pays $5,000 in taxes. In fact, you can't do it. Because when you go beyond what they pay, that's not a tax cut. That's a dole. This is tax policy, not some other kind of policy. Um, this is a good bill. It will strengthen the economy of the state of Idaho. It provides relief to the citizens of the state of Idaho. In fact, it provides tax reductions to every citizen who pays income tax in the state of Idaho. That's good policy. 
That's fair and that's appropriate. Just one last comment on graduated income tax. In my opinion, a graduated income tax penalizes attempting to move up and change the circumstances of your birth. Um, that's not something that I support. My father, when he was a boy, his family were migrant farm workers. Through hard work, working full-time while he went to college. He, in fact, he started working full-time in high school. My father went from being a migrant farm worker to being an attorney. And that can still be done today. And it's something that we should continue to foster in the state of Idaho with tax policy that does not create barriers or penalties for attempting to do so. Thank you, Madam President. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Ward Engel King. Uh, to debate against the bill, um, first of all, I'm old enough to remember um, milking cows with a three-legged stool. And I know what happens when one of those legs gets too short and it's not pretty. And I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, income tax revenue is one of the legs to our stool that our general fund is based on. And we have just a reminder that that uh, um, tax relief fund actually is online sales tax money. And it does go into a separate account right now, a Wayfair account, and it is due to sunset. And that money was supposed to come back to the general fund um, to help fund schools, um, health and welfare, corrections, um, now roads. So it's problematic when we continue to um, decrease what we're looking at in general funds. And I, I just have to say, I have not had one single email, not one single phone call from a constituent asking for income tax rate reduction. And in fact, it seems a little ironic that we'd be looking at income tax reduction in a year when many Idahoans had little or no income due to the pandemic and, and the problems that we saw arise because of that. And I also know that we have over $300 million in supplemental levies, and those are levies that are, our school districts are forced to run because we are not adequately funding them at the state level. And that is a problematic. We're 51st in the nation in per pupil funding. If we've got money right now, right now in our general fund, we should be investing in our children. We should be investing in our schools. And yes, I agree with our infrastructure because we have, it's problematic. We've neglected it for years. So this is not the time to do an income tax rate reduction. We, we, I think there is some um, rationale for a tax reduction of some kind, but Income tax rate reduction is not what the people of Idaho are asking for. So for those reasons, I'll be voting no. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Wintrow. Thank you, Madam President. To debate against the bill. Senator has the floor. Thank you, Madam President and Senators. I'll try to keep this quick. You know, budgeting, as I learned in JFAC, is about values and priorities. And we've heard a lot of discussion about those values and priorities on our floor. And I guess I, I was um, taken by the senator from 10 when he, taught, he brought Jesus Christ into the discussion um, and this notion of not graduating or making graduation rates of tithing, especially since Jesus Christ was also a strong advocate of the poor. And I see values and priorities at this point as who needs the break most? And right now, in the wave of this pandemic, our economy is booming. And folks at the top and who could telecommute and doing well are doing well financially. And that's why our income tax is up, sales tax is up. But there are folks at the lower end in the essential workers 
uh, frontline workers, restaurant, manufacturing, et cetera, that are struggling because they can't telecommute and they need a little help. And so that's why this tax relief form is not within my values and priorities because the folks who are going to benefit most don't need it. It's not that I want to punish people for being successful, but when we are successful in this economy, it's because we all, we can't do it alone. We all share in that. We all share the roads, the electrical grid, water, et cetera. Those things have to be, in paid, they have to be paid for for us all to do well. So for me, I don't mind a little income tax relief, but it has to benefit folks who need it most and who will feel, feel it most. Someone recently said to me, look, the way these rates go, the top earners could buy a nice used sedan, the middle bracket might get a car payment, and the lower bracket might get a tank of gas. And so for folks who earn a lot less, a tank of gas, 82 bucks is not enough. So for me, I'm voting not to not because I don't value people's success or think that you know they should you know have their rewards as well. But right now, we need to help folks at the bottom, because if we can get people to work, if those service industries are going, if we're getting childcare businesses going, that's going to flow up into business. I guess that's anti trickle down, but. I am urging you to vote no. And as the senator from 18 said, I haven't received one email or phone call asking for income tax cuts. In fact, it was just the opposite. When I started this session, I had constituents emailing me making it clear, we are not authorizing you to do an income tax rebate. We want an investment. We want the most conservative business plan we can and invest in our future. Take the hundreds of millions of dollars we have in excess and reinvest it in the things we need. Those are the emails I have, and I can, I can show them to you. So I stand with my constituents. I'm asking us not to cut income taxes. I'm asking us to do a different tax relief program that everybody has been asking for. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Martin. Madam President, a few years ago I had the opportunity on this floor to vote to lower the income tax rate from 7.4 to 6.9. Um, I heard doomsday predictions then. Uh, I, I don't see that they came true. I'm looking forward to again voting to take our income tax rate from 6.9 to 6.5, as this bill does, and give a little bit back to the citizens. To, um, uh, we obviously are up pre presently overtaxing. I've learned one thing about my, my, my uh, family's economy or others. If we have the money, we spend it. If we don't have the money, then we tighten our belts and find ways to get by. And so I believe that it's uh, incumbent upon us to return uh, this money to the good taxpayers of the state of Idaho and be voting aye. Is there further debate? Madam President. Senator Grill. Thank you, Madam President, to, be, to debate in favor of the bill. Uh, first of all, this, uh, as we listened to the good senator from uh, District 10, he talked about the tax relief fund, and that is the major funding mechanism for this reduction in tax. And I reiterate, it is a tax relief fund. It is not a tax, it is not a fund to uh, move monies to education or to move it to roads or to move it to somewhere else. It is to relieve taxes. Now, the question could be raised of what taxes are, are needed to uh, be reduced. Uh, we're, we've got legislation coming through uh, that we'll receive shortly, I hope, on uh, property tax uh, to help in that regard. Uh, sales tax uh, is at 6%. This particular ta income tax bill brings the uh, income tax rate down to 6.5%, which is closer to the uh, sales tax rate. We do have three different taxes here in the state. Uh, a lot of states around us only have two. And so all we can do to minimize the uh, tax burden on our citizens, we should do it. Uh, money that's left in the budget 
of the uh, state will tend to get spent somewhere. I feel it's imperative for us to do all we can to help uh, those that are paying the taxes to reduce that burden. This is not a redistribution uh, of wealth uh, bill. This is a reduction of income taxes. And obviously those that pay the most tax uh, will get a, a similar percentage back but naturally the amount that they receive is higher because they're the ones that are paying most of the tax. So I, I urge your support. Thank you. Bye. Is there further debate? S Senator Lamar. Uh, thank you, Madam President and fellow senators. Um, I just wanted to say first that it's a pleasure to serve with you all this week. Um, I um, I'm thankful for all of your service and the service of Senator Nelson and, and honored to help substitute for him today. Um, I just wanted to speak in opposition to uh, this bill today. Um, I Normally I'm a county commissioner, uh, not a senator. Um, and when I hear from people, I hear about property taxes. I do not hear about income taxes. And um, the concern that I have is that if at the state level we do not properly fund education, if we do not properly fund f uh, roads, then we are forcing our local voters to raise taxes on themselves at the property level. That they're, that they're voting locally to raise money to fund education. And that we need to use our state level funding, income tax, sales tax, so forth, to fund education not shift it back onto property taxes. I feel that if we reduce our income taxes today, then what we're really doing is, is shifting back to property taxes and forcing local voters to raise property taxes. So I would urge you all to consider a no vote. Thank you. Is there further debate? Hearing none, Senator Vick is recognized to close debate. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, good senators, uh, for the, the vigorous debate. Uh, I want to just address a couple of things that were brought up during the debate. One is, is that this gives too much money back to too few people. And I remember when our former pro tem did this in it made good sense to me, and so I'm going to do it again. And that if, if you take the chart that the senator from 29 passed out, it has who gets the tax benefits from this. And that, that, looks, that looks like that. And if you turn that chart over, that tells you who paid those taxes. The people on this side paid the most because they are not getting a higher percentage tax break in this bill, but the, because they pay so much, they get more back. And, and we have programs that distribute money not based on income. We have quite a few of them. Um, we, you know, I, I, made a, I just made a list here while we were talking about it, and, and I missed some, and, and I'm sure I did, and, and there's probably a lot better examples, but we, we spend money on health care, and that's not based on how much you make. As a matter of fact, you usually get more if you make less. Uh, we, we subsidize child care. We have unemployment pay, payments for those people who, who are having a hard time. We have free breakfast and lunch at our schools. Our, our schools are not funded based on how much you make. Everybody that goes to the same public school, whether they're very poor or very rich. Uh, we, we have some scholarships that are based, again, inversely proportional to your income. We have the grocery tax credit. Everybody gets the same amount back, regardless of how much their income is or how much they spend on uh, groceries. We get we have advanced opportunities programs for schools. I thought of that because I sit next to the, the guy that, that wrote that bill. So we have lots of things that we do in this state that are to help those who struggle. But that's not the purpose of this bill. The purpose of this bill is to provide a tax cut 
to those people who pay taxes. Um, just this year, okay, so this $162 million tax cut, just this year, income tax collections are $300 million higher than projected. That's not the, it's not the total income tax, but $302 million higher than they were projected to be when we left here a bit less than a year ago now, but, <laughs> but so even if this pal had passed a year ago and the numbers are correct, our income tax collections would still be up $140 million over projections. So what we're trying to do here is give a tax break to people who pay taxes. And like as mentioned, we have lots of things for those who don't make as much money. Uh, the property tax, again in the handout from the, ge the gentleman handed out from uh, District 29, it has a circular chart on here. And it says sales tax and income tax, individual income tax. And then it has a corporate income tax. Those are th the three big chunks on that graph. Nowhere on that graph is there property tax. I think we all know this, but we do not spend property tax in this state. It's uh, friends like the good senator from five, who's a county commissioner, that's who spends property tax. And so it's harder for us to cut property taxes because we don't spend property tax. The locals, the locals spend property tax. Uh, I want to address the threat to our federal dollars. I have had uh, long discussions with people who know more about this than I do, including uh, those from uh, the executive branch, and they do not believe, because this was done, uh, because of the timing of this, that it has any impact on the ARPA dollars. Uh, I need to point out that the, the Wayfair Fund still sunsets. We didn't change that, and so it will still sunset when it did, uh, when we originally passed the bill. School funding was brought up. This state has raised spending on schools 61% since 2013. We've raised school funding 61% since 2013. Uh, good senators, this is money that in my opinion was overpaid. Uh, it's not our money. We should give it back to those people who paid it. I'd appreciate your support. Debate is closed. Debate being closed, the question is, shall House Bill number 380 pass the Senate? The Secretary will call the roll. Hagenbrod, Anthon, Bayer, Bayer, Burgoyne, Burtonshaw, Cook, Crabtree, Den Hartog, Funk, Crow, Guthrie. Madam President. Senator Guthrie. Could I have 60 seconds? The senator has 60 seconds. Senators, the other day I went down to get some seed to drill at my place there, and they had a big stack of Levi's on the counter there, and I needed Levi's. And I started going through them, big stack, nothing in my size. Very disappointed. That's kind of the way this bill is. You know, I want tax relief, but it's not quite exactly right. And uh, I would, would have rather seen the one-time money front end the transportation fund, but because I think tax relief is important, I'll go ahead and wear some Levi's in this case that don't fit quite right. Senator votes aye. Senator Guthrie votes aye. Harris? Aye. Hyder? Aye. Lamar? No. Lee? Lent? Aye. Lodge? Martin? Aye. Nye? No. Patrick? Aye. Ryder? Rice? Aye. Ricks? Aye. Riggs? Aye. Stennett? 
Madam President, 60 seconds. Senator Stennett has 60 seconds. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, Idaho has the highest amount of minimum wage earners per capita in the country. And we're talking about 60% of Idahoans receiving $14 to $15 a month with this bill. And the bill's going to cost about $400 million in the first year. It would take only $350 million for us to pay for all our, bill our bonds and levies that are burdening our school systems. We have not balanced our budget, and Idahoans are demanding property tax relief. They're not demanding a tax rebate that gets them lunch. I vote no. Senator Stinnett votes nay. Fain? Aye. Vic? Aye. Ward Ingle King? Winder? Wintrow? Woodward? Cito? Anthon? Bear? Lee? Aye. There is also a pair vote. Senator Lakey votes aye. Senator Johnson votes nay. Roll call shows 27 ayes, 8 nays, zero absent and excused, a majority having voted in the affirmative, House Bill number 380 has passed the Senate. Is there a correction to the title? Hearing none, the title is also approved and House Bill 380 will be returned to the House of Representatives.